old girl. Nolanti the Barber. My name is Louise Pearl. I was born in Baghdad. I was six years old. I understand the politics. I understood that a fascist government took over for a while. And that while the fascist country was like a vacuum, and vacuum is an invitation to have chaos. In the chaos, what do you do? Best, in best entertainment to go on and do. Still, and I remember my mother was saying, oh, they broke into such and such store by the merchandise. We were looking, it was like a movie. So sitting and seeing people carrying goods and she was, it wasn't anything threatening to us. It looked like looting, that's all. And so and eventually the army came and they machine guns. They uh, killed quite a few of the looters, one of them. He, he was leaning on our door actually and was in front of our door. And when the sh shooting started, my father said, let's go downstairs to the cellar. And he asked us to go one by one in order not to be hit because they also had airplanes. And as we sat in the cellar, my father smoked, do you want a cigarette? And I said, I'll get it. And he said, but don't look. That's child of six years old, don't look. Of course I looked. And I went to the window and I saw the injured guy moaning and none of the Muslim neighbors really helped him. I never told my parents about it. At the time, at least, maybe I told them, you know, several years later, because I figured I broke the law, and I don't want to be punished. Nobody was safe to walk outside for, you know, we didn't know what's going on the following days. And uh, I remember a guy brought milk, and my mother was talking to him, and uh, she asked him some question, and he said, there is like total chaos. He didn't see it. So they asked me to go to the store and give me a list of things to deliver. And evidently they had a setup for that. And I did it and on the way there I found some money on the floor. I thought I was six years old. I felt like, oh my gosh, this is really I'm wealthy. So I came home and I told my parents I went to Mexico to do this deed. We were scared once we saw the airplane were flying, and, and it, it was an open type of the, the house in, in town was the typical Middle Eastern with the uh, openness, all the rooms opened to the sky, because they had in the middle an open cupola right there in, in the wall. And it wasn't a huge window either, so it was really miracle, miraculous that we, none of us were hit. We were all were standing in looking like seeing a movie. Our neighbors, uh, we thank them for, you know, because we heard them say there are no Jews here. And uh, we thank them and they said, well, we really were kicking you for the last. That's my memory. Uh, I wanted to relate something related to being in Baghdad. After the Farhud, there was such hysteria and fear among the young people. I had a younger sister by then in school, and I used to rush to, you know, calm her down or have, have her with me. But that was a hysteria that left an evidently very big impression on me because I had nightmares that recurred 20 years later. They still recurred. I'm in the school. I'm running upstairs. A Muslim with a huge knife is following me. And that recurred over and over, and, and I had two kids that still had it. Eventually it stopped. But that's kind of mentality after the Farouk, because you knew you could be killed.